What did you think of the show today? I really liked it. Okay. What, what, did you have a favorite part of the show? I did like when I became the tightrope. <laughs> that was okay. fun. Okay. Um, anything else? Um, I would say definitely come back. I would definitely come back here. It was a really fun experience. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Did you have a favorite part of the show? Uh, my favorite part was definitely the horse riding competition. Okay. Um, now, you've been in one of Ed's shows before? Yes, I was in the show five years ago. Okay. Did you enjoy the experience? Yes, I did. Okay. Anything else? It's very, it's a very fun experience to go under hypnosis and it's very calm and relaxing. Okay. But it's all, you have control over what your self morals are. Okay. Thank you. Every time you hear laughter and applause, it is for you. It is not for me, the hypnotist, it is for you. Let's make some noise for your onstage volunteers. Yeah, very, very good, excellent, excellent. So what I want you to do, go ahead and sit up straight, sit up straight, sit up straight, close your eyes, but sit up straight. I want you to imagine, and for a couple of you, this isn't gonna be much of an imagination at all, but I want you to imagine that you are let's say six to eight years old. Now, if you're right around that age, I'm not asking you to be yourself. I'm asking you to create a persona of being six to eight years old. When you have that nod your head, acting like a six to eight year old, excellent. And you're a little kid who's going to the county fair to show your favorite animal. And you are sitting in that big old SUV, the trailer is in back, and you are excited to be going to your first county fair. This is gonna be great, you're gonna show your animal. And you are seated next to your grandmother and on the other side is your older brother. And your older brother always picks on you. But I want you to think about what it's like to be six to eight years old if I'm touching on the shoulder. It just means I'm getting your attention. If I'm talking, I'm talking specific to you. I want you to think about what that animal is you're going to show. Have that in your mind. And it can be an exotic animal. It could be a regular animal like a pig or a cow. But anytime you think about that animal, you are proud of that animal. So here we go, you're sitting next to grandma and you're in that little bouncy, or big bouncy SUV and all of a sudden you realize grandma smells. Grandma's sitting next to you on the left and grandma smells. And I'm just going to ask you when I'm touching you on the shoulder, I'm talking to you, what does grandma smell like? Onions. Grandma smells like onions. All right. That could be a good smell or not. Who knows? All right. What does grandma smell like to you? Dirt. Dirt. Very good. What does grandma smell like to you? Like a musty carpet. And little dude, what does grandma smell like to you? She smells like a retirement home. Like a retirement home. Give a big round of applause, everybody. Onions, dirt, a retirement home, excellent. And your sibling is on the other side. Your sibling is older than you. Your sibling is 12 years old, and he's got long arms, and all of a sudden he thwacks you on the ear. Oh my goodness, he thwacks you on the ear again. Oh, what that dude is so mean to you, and your arms are too short to do anything about it. But as if your brother, so the audience can see, look straight ahead and give your brother the biggest, meanest face you can. Give him your biggest, meanest face you can. <laughs> Grandma's sleeping in between you. She's not gonna be any good. And all he does is smile back at you and you look up at, at your dad and mom in front. And Dad's just driving, mom doesn't know. You just gotta put up with it and grandma is sleeping there. And so we go on down the road and you're, you're in the trailer and you're looking out the road and your brother thwacks you on the ear again. Oh my goodness. And one, two, three, be the dad, be the dad. 
What that time dad saw it in the mirror, what does dad say? Knock it off. Knock it off. What does dad say? Stop hitting your brother. Stop hitting your brother. What does dad say? You're grounded. What does dad say? Stop it. Stop it. Give him another big round of applause, everybody. All right, so you're six to eight years old. You're at the county fair now. You've got your animals bedded down. And I'm going to come and ask you what your animal is. Think about that. You are six to eight years old. You are excited to be at the county fair. What animal are you going to show today, dude? My pet monkey. Pet monkey? And what's your pet monkey's name? Boots. Boots the monkey. What are you going to be showing today? My pet toad. Pet toad. And what's your toad's name? Greg. Greg the toad. Excellent. What animal are you showing at the fair? An axolotl. Oh, what? An axolotl. An axolotl. That is a dragon, if I remember right. Is that true? No. No. Okay. An axolotl. I will look it up on the internet later. What are you showing today? A pig. A pig. And what's your pig's name? Johnny. Johnny the pig. And what's your axolotl's name? Carry the axolotl. Give him another big round of applause. Your dad comes up to you and says, listen, I want you and your brother to go into the fair and have some fun. Mom and I will watch the animal while you're in there. And your dad gives you a $5 bill. And this is your money to spend any way that you want to. This is great. And he says, you go in, have the fair. When the lights are on, you come back, and Mom and I will go off and have some fun. But for right now, go into the fair. And so I want you as six to eight-year-olds to be at the fair now. And the first place you go to is the Hall of Mirrors. The Hall of Mirrors. And so, you know, this is where there are mirrors that make you look short and squat or tall and skinny, whatever. And you go ahead and pay for your ticket. And I want you to go ahead and stay in hypnosis. But one, two, three, open your eyes, open your eyes, open your eyes. Open your eyes. There you go. Go ahead and stand up. Go ahead and stand up. Give yourself some room. Go ahead and move away from your chairs. But give yourself some room. That's right. Come on over here and come on over here a little bit further. Terrific. You go ahead and be in the middle. That's fine. And so I want you to show us what it looks like in the mirror. The first mirror you see is the short squat dumpy mirror. Go ahead and show us what a short squat you looks like. Little short arms. Go ahead and squat down. Go ahead and squat down. You are short. Little short arms. Little short legs and go ahead and make a face in that mirror. Wave your short little squat arms around. <laughs> and it makes you laugh. It makes you laugh. It looks so silly. It looks so silly. Okay, let's go to the next mirror. Stand up, stand up. And it is a normal mirror. Go ahead and check yourself out. Check your hair, check your shirt, all that kind of good stuff. They put a normal mirror in there. Go to the next mirror, and it is the tall, skinny mirror. It's like you are seven foot tall. It's like you are seven foot tall. Show us that amazed look at this six to eight year old, seven foot tall. And go ahead, if you're that tall, you better shoot some baskets. Go ahead, shoot some baskets, and in your mind, everyone goes in. Everyone goes in, shoot those baskets, that's right, and go ahead and move to the next one. And it is the wavy, squiggly one. It is the wavy, squiggly mirror. Show us what you look like with long, squiggly legs, long, squiggly arms, long, squiggly neck. Go ahead and make a face into that mirror, and your lips just stretch all over the place. It is just the most amazing thing that you can see. And go ahead and go to the next mirror. And it is another normal mirror. Check yourself out again. And all of a sudden, one, two, three, boo! It's a scary picture. 
It's a scary picture and it scares you so bad. You are six years old and you are scared silly. That's right, and the guy behind the thing comes out and says, Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to scare you so bad. Tell you what, don't cry, don't cry, but I will give you a coupon to the ice cream stand next door as an apology for being so scared. How, who would like to have a coupon to the ice cream store? Go ahead and turn around, turn around, go ahead and hold your hand, no, no, turn to the audience and go ahead, hold out your hand if you'd like to have a coupon, there you go. There you go, there you go. Go ahead, sit back down. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a big round of applause. One, two, three, and sleep. I'm going to give you a suggestion that you are warm at this county fair. You are warm. In fact, it's like 87, 90 degrees out. You are warm. You are comfortable and this ice cream is going to taste delicious and cool you down just a little bit but you're not cold here at all you are warm and comfortable and feeling great and so as we go to the ice cream stand they have all sorts of amazing flavors absolutely wonderful fantastic amazing flavors i'm going to ask you what kind of flavor you're going to have what kind of flavor ice cream are you going to have? Cookie dough. Cookie dough. What are you going to have? Cookie dough. Cookie dough too. What are you going to have? Rookie. Rookie. I don't know what rookie is. Explain it to me. Chocolate with peanut butter chips. I love that. And what are you going to have today? Chocolate. Chocolate. Give them a big round of applause. Go ahead, reach out and grab your ice cream cone and bring it up. It is like 92 degrees out. It's starting to drip. Go ahead and lick that ice cream cone. Lick that ice cream cone. Bring it up. You can move while you're in hypnosis. That's right. Lick your ice cream cone and it starts to drip down your elbow. Go ahead and get that dripping down your elbow. That's right and the most amazing thing starts to happen. Your ice cream cone hand starts to stretch out in front of you. Stretch out in front of you, you can't pull it back. It stretches out further and further, you can't pull it back. It is getting stuck, it's like a magic trick. But you've got somebody with ice cream right next to you, maybe you could share your ice cream with them and they could share ice cream with you. I don't know, give it a try, maybe it'll work, there you go, and lick their ice cream cone. Lick, lick their ice cream cone, they're licking yours, that's right, one, two, three, twice as fast, twice as fast, licking their ice cream cone, getting it all taken care of, you're down to that cone part, take a bite out of it, take a bite out of it, lick it twice as fast again, there you go, take another bite, take another bite. Lick it twice as fast again. It's almost gone. It's almost gone. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. Your ice cream is gone. There you go. One, two, three, and sleep. Deeper, more focused, relaxed. In a moment, I'm going to send you out into the audience. You are no longer six to eight years old. You are one of the carnival barkers. You have a unique skill set. You are an elbow inspector, and you are going to bring people back on stage by the choice of their fantastic elbows. And just like there are palm readers and people that read the lines of your hand and the bumps on your head, you read elbows. And so one, two, three, open your eyes, open your eyes, go ahead and look out into the audience being careful of the speakers up here, but go ahead and stand up. Stand up and go ahead, go into the audience and bring us back a fantastic elbow. If they ask you to volunteer, come up on stage. I promised I would not embarrass anybody who was in hypnosis. I didn't, come on up on stage, sir. There you go. Check out those elbows, check out those elbows. Oh, that's a good one. Bring them up on stage, bring them up on stage. 
I promised I wouldn't embarrass anybody that went into hypnosis. I didn't say anything about the people who stayed in the audience. All right, come on up. You want to take the stairs, that's fine. Absolutely wonderful. All right, give them some room, give them some room. You two stay here. I'm going to start on that side. All right. I want you to examine his elbow here. There you go. Check it out. It tells you about his personality, what his strengths are. You're going to brag on this guy based on his elbow. Go ahead and turn him so the audience can see. Go ahead and turn him so the audience can see. And you go ahead and keep on checking out that elbow. I will go ahead and hold this, this microphone for you. What does his elbow tell you about him? He likes motorcycles. He likes motorcycles. Sir, is that true? Yes. All right. You, you're one for one. What else does it tell you about him? He likes vanilla ice cream. He likes... You can, where do you see vanilla ice cream? <laughs> Point. Right in there. Do you like vanilla ice cream? Kind of. Kind of. Okay, that's close. One more positive characteristic of your gentleman here. He doesn't like carnivals very much. <laughs> he doesn't like carnivals very much? Where does that show? Right in there? Okay. Do you like carnivals? Yeah. Yeah, okay. One on, on the mark, one close, and one wrong. That's not too bad. Give him a round of applause. Go ahead and stay up here on stage. Go ahead and stay up on, go ahead and check his elbow out. Turn it towards the audience. There you go. I'm going to hold the microphone for you. What's the first positive attribute you can tell from his elbow? He's energetic. Energetic. Would you consider yourself to be energetic? All right, one for one. He's very active in sports. Are you active in sports? Yeah. That's two for two. All right, what else does that elbow tell you? Anything else? He loves his family. Do you love your family? Yeah. <laughs> three for three. Give him a big round of applause, everybody. That is fantastic. Well done. Three for three. All right, over here. Wow, that's a harsh t-shirt. What does your elbow, her, her elbow tell you about her? Three positive characteristics. I'm going to move a couple of chairs out of the way here. Go ahead, show the audience, show the audience. And what is the first positive characteristic you have learned about her? She's very strong. Are you very strong? Yes, that's one for one. What else? She's brave. Are you brave? Yes. Absolutely. Two for two. What's the third aspect? She's an animal person. Are you an animal person? Yes. Three for three. Give a big round of applause, everybody. Just from the elbow. Congratulations. They are fantastic. All right. Very nice. I love your t-shirt. Go ahead, examine her elbow, take a good look, then show it to the audience. Show it to the audience. There you go. Let me stand behind you here. No, nope, keep showing it to the audience. What is the first positive characteristic you can tell from her elbow? Very hardworking. Are you very hardworking? Yeah. One for one. What's the next one? I see. Creative as well. Are you very creative? Yes. Terrific. Two for two. What's the third positive characteristic? Very charismatic and lovable. Charismatic and lovable. Are you charismatic and lovable? I hope so. There. We'll count that three for three. Give him a big round of applause. Give them all a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Escort your volunteer back to the audience. Thank you all very much. When they get back up here, we'll go ahead and do another skit. We're doing fine on time. All right. Go ahead and come back into your chairs there.
I did not hypnotize anybody to bark like a dog. That really was a dog. All right. One, two, three, and sleep. Deeper, more focused, relaxed. Stay in your seat, but relaxed. All right, go ahead and sit up straight, sit up straight. And what I want you to do next is you are back to being that excited six to eight year old. One, two, three, six to eight year old, excited and happy to be here. And you are in a 4-H goat milking contest. You are going to be in a 4-H goat milking contest. You have to get one pint of milk out of your goat. That is one cup, eight ounces. So stay in hypnosis, but one, two, three, open your eyes, open your eyes. Go ahead, spread yourselves out on the stage here. Go ahead, spread yourself out on the stage a little bit. You just come forward, they can move down a little bit. Go ahead, squat down, your goat is in front of you. Your goat is in front of you. When I count to three, start milking your goat into that little pail. One, two, three, begin milking your goat. That's right. Oh boy, there we go. That is one tall goat right there. All right, go, 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 go. You've got, you've got your first ounce in. You've got your first ounce in. Get faster, faster, faster. Get that next ounce in, get that next ounce in. One, two, three, there it is. Get all oh, the person next to you is going even faster. Going even faster, you're falling behind. Look out, up, 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 up. Get it in the can, don't spray outside the can. Three ounces, three ounces, and, and three and a half, and three and a half, and, and, beep. Oh, the guy next to you got the, the eight ounces before you did. Congratulate him, congratulate him. There you go, there you go. All right, come on back up. There you go, congratulations all around. It was so close, but there you go. One, two, three, and sleep to a big round of applause. Fantastic. All right. Uh, we got that much time left. Here's what we're going to do. Um, person I'm touching on the shoulder right now. You are a world famous tightrope walker. You are internationally famous. I want you to come up with a tightrope walker name and you are dressed in a black leotard with stars all over it and you've got a maroon cape that goes with it and you are styling, you are famous, you are wonderful, you are fantastic. Everybody else, you can open your eyes and watch the tightrope walking if you want, but if my tightrope walker would open your eyes, open your eyes, come on over here, come on over here, everybody else, you can go ahead and open your eyes and watch the tightrope walking in front of you. What is your tightrope walking world famous name? The Walkmaster. The Walkmaster. Excellent. And how long have you been tightrope walking? When did you start? How old were you when you first started? About two years old. Two years old. Fantastic. And so how many years have you been tightrope walking now? I've been tightrope walking for 17 years. 17 years. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. The Walkmaster. What I'm going to have you do is go across the stage and, and one foot in front of the other. And this is Nebraska. It gets breezy, so do be careful. In the middle, we brought some animals. You're, you're doing the low rope here. We brought some animals from the petting zoo. You're going to lean down and pet the goats that have just been milked, so they're very happy. And here's the deal. You are world famous for one particular trick that you do in the middle of the rope. What is that skit? I turn multiple times. You turn multiple times. Excellent. I'm going to go down to the other end so that I can greet you on the other end. But go ahead and give up your applause for the Walkmaster. There you go. Come on down, come on down very carefully, very carefully, there you go. 
You're in the middle. Go ahead, pet the goats. Pet the goats down there. There you go. They are happy little goats. And then go ahead and do your trick. Go ahead and do your trick. There's one. There's two. And there's three, four, and a fourth. Give the Walkmaster a big round of applause. Take a bow, take a bow. Fantastic. Now we're going to have you, this is what has made you world famous. You are going to do the same thing walking backwards. Walking backwards. This is what made the Walkmaster famous. Go ahead. There goes the Walkmaster going backwards. Check out the breeze. Be careful. Be careful. Begin doing your spins. There's one. There's two. There's three. Give them a big round of applause, the Walkmaster. There you go. Fantastic. Go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. And one, two, three, and sleep. Deeper, more focused, relaxed. Our last skit here today, and then I'm going to give you my hypnotic gift, is you are drunk riding heroes in the county fair rodeo. So hold out your hand, hold out your hand, hold out one of your hands. I'm going to give you what represents your horse. Go ahead and hold on to it. There you go. There you go. Go ahead and hold on to that. There you go. Right here, here's your horse. Get a good grip. There you go. And you, sir, have the most dangerous horse of all. I want you to think of your bronc riding name, and I want you to think of your horse's name. One, two, three, have that in your mind. Go ahead, open your eyes, open your eyes, look at your horse, and I'm going to have you go down and join me. Go ahead, stand up, stand up, stand up. We're gonna talk a little bit of stage safety here. You are in a rodeo but you have to stay between the speakers and the chairs, okay? No actual falling down that would hurt you, okay? But if you don't stay on, the, on your bronc for eight seconds, it's a wipeout, you don't get any prize money. The audience is gonna count with me, 1,001, 1,002, et cetera, and I'm just gonna give you a few more instructions here. You have the most dangerous horse up here. Go ahead and join me down here. Our first rider right here. Go ahead and walk. Come on over here. Form behind him, two. Three and four. Go ahead and form the line back here. What is your bronc riding name? Rodeo Randy. Rodeo Randy, excellent. And your horse's name is? Good night, Barbara. Good night, Barbara. I love it. That might be the best name I've heard all the times I've done this skit. Terrific. Okay, you're going to count with me. 1,001 up to 1,008. If he wipes out before 1,008, all he gets is your applause. I'm going to come down here. And the shoot opens and come on out. Count everybody. 1,001, 1,002. Oh, he wiped out. Give him applause. Give him applause. The rodeo clowns come out. And they take care of you. They take care of your horse. And go ahead and sit right there, if you would, please. All right. Here we go. What is your bronc riding name? Gary. Gary. And Gary, what is your horse's name? Princess Gary. Princess what? Gary. 
Gariel, Princess Gariel, excellent. Go ahead, we're gonna push you out of the chute. Everybody count for me, and he's off. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Oh, and he wipes out too. Give him a round of applause. The rodeo clowns come in. They take care of you, they take care of your horse, and go ahead and have a seat. Terrific. What is your rodeo name? Mr. Fierce Warrior. Mr. Fierce Warrior, and your horse's name is? The White Mohawk. The White Mohawk. Go ahead, count out loud, really, really loud, and out of the gate. 1,001. 1,002. 1,003. 1,004. He's getting close. Oh no, he wipes out. The rodeo clowns come out. They take care of you. They take care of your horse. Give a round of applause, people. That's all he gets. All right, come on up here into the gate. What is your bronc riding name? Wild Willie. Wild Willie, love it. And what is your bronking buck's name? Princess. Princess. Princess is a killer horse, everybody. And out the gate. Louder. He made it, he made it, he made it, he dismounts. Eight seconds, he's the winner, he's the winner. Give him a big round of applause, everybody. But wait a minute, the judges, what is that music? Listen to that music. He was on a merry-go-round. The judges have disqualified him for being on a merry-go-round horse. What do you think about that, audience? Boos or not? Oh! What do you have to say? The whole arena is booing you. It's a horse. They didn't say it had to be a real horse. He's got a point. He was riding a horse. And how long did you stay on? Eight seconds. Eight seconds. Audience, what do you think? Yay or nay? Yay! <laughs> the horse did not have a heartbeat. I don't know. Judges are going. Yeah! <laughs> it is not in the rules. You can't ride a rodeo horse. He did win today. They're going to rewrite the rules for next year. Give him a round of applause. All right. One, two, three, and sleep. Deeper, more focused, relax. First of all, remember the show at least as well as any other time you've had doing stuff. Let all the skit ideas, as far as their effect on you, go away. And what I want you to do is take this hypnotic gift from me. I want you to think about if you could improve one little thing in your life, not I want to be a better person, but rather of all the little things that could make you a better son, make you a better student, make you a better whatever it is, one little thing in your life that you could do, feel, or believe, what would that one little thing be? Go ahead, sit up straight, sit up straight. When you have that one little thing in mind, go ahead and nod your head and smile. Nod your head and smile. Excellent. As I have you emerge from hypnosis, that one little thing is going to go deeper and deeper into your subconscious mind. It is not going to be a compulsion. It is not going to get in the way of anything else. It's just going to be this gentle little reminder of what it is you want to do, feel, or believe that your life would improve. Now here's the cool thing. After you have this one little thing in place, you can put the next little thing in place. It could be sequential to what you have in mind, or it could be something totally different. But this is a life resource you can use for the rest of your life. So go ahead, open your eyes, open your eyes. 
Stand up and give yourselves some room. Stand up and give yourselves some room. As I count from one to five, I want you to go ahead, fully emerge from hypnosis, but right now plant your left foot on the ground and have it be as if it's stuck like glue. Check it out, you can't move it, you can't move it. If you're still in hypnosis, when I get done with the induction, your foot will still be stuck. If you've emerged at any time, you'll be able to move your left foot. Quit trying right now. Look at me, look at me, look at me. And as I count to five, fully emerging from hypnosis, one, let that energy come up your body. Let that waking state conscious self get in touch with your creative self about what you did during this show and how much fun you had being creative and having fun. Two, for the next couple of three days, even longer if you like, the color red can be a gentle but persistent reminder of that one little thing that you are putting into place, not as a compulsion, does not get in the way of anything else, but improves your life. And after you've got that one little thing in place, you can put the next little thing in place. Three, even though we had just a few brief minutes doing hypnosis today, you find you feel wonderful. Just a few brief minutes of your time that has allowed you to have fun and be creative and your trust level goes back to whatever you need in your life, but I hope we remain friends for the rest of our lives. Four, preparing to fully emerge from hypnosis to one more big round of applause. One more big round of applause for the entertainment they provided. And five, fully emerged from hypnosis, feeling terrific. I'm going to ask you to come off on the, on the stairs over here. And if you have any questions after the show in the audience or from you guys, I am happy to answer them. Give them another round of applause. Your entertainment today.